Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? What a lovely Sunday morning. Did you see that? The sun is bright. The clouds are all right. And we're enjoying ourselves. It's about, what's the time? It's half past seven. It is half past seven on the Sunday morning. And I've got a little few jobs to do. Look at this. My aloe vera is sprouting out a little pup. Sprouting out a little one. Oh, that is brilliant, isn't it, eh? I ain't watered this in some time. What I did is I blacked out the window because it was getting a bit hot and sunny in here because the sun comes straight in here. And um, this one loves it. I've had to move the other aloes to other places. But this one loves it in here in a nice dark. Uh, it's going a bit funny like that. Oh, I just snapped it. But um, yeah, anyway, so that likes it there. But I've got to get the old laminator out. It's in this bag. All right, it's a bag of a CB radio and some other bits and bobs. But I've got to get the old laminator out because I've got to do a little bit of laminating. This is um, some uh, instructions which have been in these folders now for some time and I think it's best if I actually laminate them. If I actually stop being lazy and if I actually laminate them. Um, they're handwritten instructions, you know, not manufacturer ones, but uh, they're, uh, you know, they're in good condition still, so I need to laminate them so that they... I can laminate them and then put them back in these folders, probably, for extra protection. So, let's get the old laminator going. Where's the switch on this? There we go. Hot. That's what we want. There we go. That takes about five minutes to warm up, that does, when that goes to ready. Then we know we're ready to rock and roll. Oh, Roger, well understood. So are you there, dude, Mr. Trevor? How are you doing? Is it a nice morning for you? Yeah, fine, mate. Yeah, lovely. Take it to one four a minute, please, Ben. Blimey. All right, give me a minute. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, Anything on the agenda today? I'm just about to do some laminating. Laminating? Uh, not with ya. Well, you know like when you get some paper and you want the paper to be protected so you got uh, this in, you, you can encase it in like a plastic film and you put it through a laminator and uh, it, it heats up the plastic and it sticks it all together so the paper is then encased in this plastic case. Roger? Only A4 there, buddy, because what it is, I've got some instructions for um, for a tent um, that I've, I've had in this folder for many times, a lot, many times, many years. And, um, you know, I thought to myself this morning, bloody hell, let's laminate it to protect it further. Why not, mate? And then you can uh, find the centre, punch two holes through it, put it in a nice pile. I can do about 30 mile an hour, those little things. Yeah, Roger, you can get them to go over 100, mate. Um, but the ones I've got go about sort of 50 or so mile an hour. So um, I've got a little buggy that'll be a, bit, a little bit slower. One of them's got a three-speed gearbox in it, Trev. One of them has three gears there, Rog. Blimey, how'd you, how'd you change Talking about nitro cars, we are. No, it works on um, centrifugal forces. Um, goes into first gear, obviously. And then as, it, as the gearbox starts to speed up, as you speed up... Um, it then throws out a little magnet with a little gear in it, flicks it into second gear, and the same for third. And then as the as you slow down and the RPM slows down, the little sort of the centrifugal force gets less, and it slides back into second, and then eventually slides back into first. Roger. It's also got reverse. That's remote. Fly, 
haven't they? Well, it's all, almost it's almost like an, uh, an automatic drive then, isn't it? Alright, there we go. Just had a nice old track with the Trevor while I was doing this. Um, it's amazing how you find at half past seven on a Sunday morning on the CB. Anyway, that's the last one going in there now. Done all of these. These are just handwritten instructions that um, came with the tent when uh, when I bought it. So, and they've been in these folders now for um, years, basically. So I thought to myself, well, it's about time. Let's um, let's laminate them. I might try and put them back in them folders, or I might just leave them like this. Um, I think I'll try and put them back in the folders, and then I might see if I can get... You know you can get those little folders, and I can have them like a book thing, can't I, rather than having them loose. But at least it protects them a bit more having them laminated. And, um, yeah. It's always handy, always handy. I even laminated my frequency chart. <laughs> I don't know. Have a look at this, look. This is my old welder. It's uh, covered in cobwebs because it's been stuffed down the back. Still got a couple of old sticks on there, look. A couple of old rods. Look, these are probably 6013s. That's what I used to use. It's an Oxford <coughs> RT110. Nice old welder. Goes up to 110 amps. 200 to 240 volts. Yeah, some work return, electron, electron. Oil capacity 28 litres. Tells you what oil. Oil called electric arc welder. Yeah, it's a nice old thing. It's so heavy, uh, trying to move it around with the handles. About, so, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, I made this little trolley for it. It's just a round piece of plate that I found on a landfill somewhere and that I was working on at the time. Welded some wheels to the bottom, got some um, box section, welded it to the bottom of the uh, plate, welded a bit along the top there, and it serves quite handy for uh, putting the um, the leads around there, and you can push it around. The wheels aren't particularly good, they were cheap wheels, but uh, that works very well, and it means you ain't got to keep lifting it up, plus... I put a towel underneath there to stop it so that that's not on the uh, on the metal but it keeps it off the ground so that stop prevents the bottom from rusting because the last thing I wanted was it to sit on the concrete ground all the time and then the bottom would rust away and then obviously all the oil would leak out and then it wouldn't work so <coughs> but that's got to be over a hundred years old that welder I don't know if it's got a, a year of manufacturer on it uh, Max duty cycle input 3.3. It don't tell you what the uh, the year is. It tells you the max duty cycle. It's got serial number 76295. But it doesn't say anything about the year it was made. But this has got to be someone on here might know. But that's got to be a hundred years old or something like that. I reckon. Something like that, 1930s, 1940s, maybe, maybe not quite 100 year old, but anyway, lovely old welder. I've got to crack on moving stuff. I've got this old welder down here, this old MIG welder that I've got to get working. The wire feed broke on it, still got a bit of gas on it, but the wire feed broke on it years ago. Um, I don't know, we're talking, uh, we're talking eight or nine years ago, the wire feed broke because it's before my kids were born, so it's more than eight years ago that that broke. Um, so I need to try and get that to work at some point, but I've got to get it all out for now. Let me go in here. Look. All right, okay. I can't remember what's in here, you see. Load of stuff. Right, well, we'll sort it out later on. We'll see what's in there later on. Sort that out. Just got to do a bit of general tidying. Ah, <clears throat> I come to this corner now. I don't really know what's in this corner. I've got a plug hanging down. That goes to that uh, light. My wife bought me that light just when we met <laughs> more than 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. <laughs> she bought that for me. Anyway, so it looks like I've got an old radio here. Looks like I've got a box. I've got an air filter. Lovely. That might come in handy for something. I don't know what that might come in handy for, but. 
I'm trying to have a clear out, and I'm thinking, do I need to keep half of this stuff? And if the answer is no, then it's going. So we've got this box. Ah, I remember these lights. Right, lights. So there's a light switch there. And these are all the plugs. Oh, these are all plug sockets. Oh, that's when, a few years ago, I was going to re rewire, well, not necessarily rewire, but I was going to change all the plug sockets in my house. Because the ones that are there are crap, and they're black, and they're terrible, and they fall apart. And I was going to put some new plug sockets on. Oh, man, we're talking seven years ago. And, um, never done it. They're there. Now I found them. I might go and do that this weekend. Change all the plug sockets over for those ones. Get rid of the crap ones. But, um, right, at least I know where they are now, then. Got this old radio. I remember this when I got this. I found this one, didn't I? So this is just an old... I don't need this in there really, do I? Definitely don't. It's got tape in it. Look, bloody hell. Right, let's get this out and have a look. Oh, it's a bit dusty. It's got old tape in it. Now that's what I call music. 35. Huh. don't know if it works or not. It might do, it might not. Uh, anyway, don't need it, so that's going. Remember this old toolbox which I found down here? I remember this. Um, we're talking, this has got to be, oh, 2000, 2009, something like that. Must have got this. This was a present, whether it was a birthday or Christmas present, I can't remember. But it was a present from my, at the, my girlfriend at the times, mum and dad. It must have been Christmas, it might have been birthday, I can't remember now, bloody hell. Anyway, they, they was asking like, what, what do I want? Uh, I, remember, I remember that, and I was like, I don't know, just, I'm not really bothered with anything though, it's just a fault that counts rather than the actual gift, but these people, they were all about um, money, and they were all about like, status, I suppose, in a way. If you have, If somebody has one thing, like my mum, for example, at the time, she went out and bought a 2002 Land Rover Discovery. Um, and so they they had an old, they didn't have an old, they had a, a different car. That, I can't remember what they had. What did they have? can't remember, a Vox Lastra or something. As soon as my mum went out and bought that, they went out and bought the newest Land Rover Discovery. You know, everything was tit for tat sort of thing. Anyway, and they knew that I liked working on my cars and all that. I had a Citroen Saxo at the time. So they bought me this, and uh, yeah, I've used it, well, I used it a fair bit actually back in the day, um, lost a socket there, tape measure got broke, um, it's quite a cheap set but it weren't cheap at the same time, I think it's probably about 30 or 40 quid, I've filled it full of these, it come with all them, it come with a load of other tools but I've filled it full of other bits and bobs, like screwdrivers, good pair of long nose pliers in there, a few spanners. I've probably been looking for half of these tools. Load of cable ties. There's a voltmeter. Oh, that is. Oh, it's a wire stripper. A couple of screwdrivers, socket. But yeah, there's a bit of a story to this one. <laughs> um, do I need it? That's the question. Uh, not really. It is in the way. Uh, I dare say there'll be someone I know that might want it. It's had a beating because it, I took it around, you know, it stayed in the boot of my car, plus I've moved it away, it's got a dent in the top. Um, yeah, so, a bit of a story to this one. But, uh, yeah, don't know what to do with that. You can't lift it up by the handle because it's bent. Something's, oh, bent, on it. Something's bent on it, so that doesn't do up. You only try and lift it up by the handle, that pops open and then it sort of flaps everywhere. But I might try and bend it back, but, uh, yeah. That's got a bit of a story. Had a bit of a lucky escape from that, I think, to be honest. Bloody hell. Yeah. Why do they have to speak in that language? You're in England, speak English. Anyway, I just pulled out this toolbox and uh, Pretty massive spiders crawled out of there. You clean all that up. 
Don't know what I'm going to do with these toolboxes though. Got to find somewhere to put them. And get rid of the spiders basically. So we've ended up, I've put some of the toolboxes over there for now. Um, but we've ended up with this one here that I can't fit nowhere. Um, what is in it? Proper rusted up there. That one works. That one works. I might better get that off with a screwdriver or something. I'm going to have to soak it in some oil, I think. Try and get the. Uh, get it to work. But I need to see what's in it. The trouble is the box is a good box. That's why I can't bear to get rid of these boxes because they're good boxes, you know. I've got to work out what to do with this welder. But they're good boxes, these boxes. So, depends what's in them. This box is probably 60 years old or 70 years old, you know. It's an old box. I don't want to break it, really. Let's see. somehow managed to lock itself. Oops. I wonder if it somehow managed to lock itself look. That's a lock with a little key that is. I wonder if it's managed to lock itself somehow. Bloody hell. It weren't locked because I remember when I got it this come from my dad and when he gave it to me um, I opened it up and had a look inside. So it, it was open but I wonder if that lock's managed to sort of move around somehow and lock itself up. Well, I might leave that for another day, because I, I can't bear to break it. So, this welder. Some TIG welding gloves there, they're for welding TIG. Um, what we got here? A toolbox. Been there a long time, though. Uh, oh, it's for the screws. It's just for the screws and stuff. Alright, what's in there? Okay, so we got some... Got nozzle cleaners for uh, burning gear. It's a trigger for the welding torch. Uh, shrouds, PTFE tape, a bottle key, um, some nozzles, different sizes, a different shroud. Yeah. I don't know why I changed that one. Perhaps different type of welder I was doing. Right, so that's that then in there. And uh, I've got a snell on a brand new box of welding uh, wire. That's an air filter cover for a lawn boy 4651 or 4652, possibly other models also take that cover. So this is a brand new torch that I put on this. I only used it a few times. Look, it was a brand new torch I put on this welder when I got it. Don't know how old the welder is. Um, I dare say it's made in Italy, so at least it's not a Chinese one. That's a MIG 160 850, whatever that means. It's a Siobra, Siobora, I don't know, whatever that says. I was doing some quite thick welding the last time I used it. That will work. Yeah, it all works fine. Um, the only thing, spot time. No, so if you're doing spot welding, uh, not spot welding. If you want, um, if you're doing like uh, car bodies and things, you can set it to go off after a certain amount of time. You know, because thin metal, or you can just have maximum voltage. It's important to remember that MIG welders go by voltage and not by amps. So by turning up, oh, that, sorry, that's the wire speed. What am I chatting about? That's the wire speed. That's the voltage. So by turning that up, you're turning up the voltage, not the amps. But I've got MIG, MAG, all the different types. And it's got thermal protection, all the glass of insulation. It's got all different things there that 
then uh, 240 volts and 11 amps, 16 amp tells you what numbers and everything. It just loads of information there. So when I when I used to do welding as a job, I had um, some bigger welders than this in the workshop. Um, you know they're monsters and you can whack them right up. But I got this one just for doing general bits and bobs, you know. Um, but the trouble was <clears throat> the wire. Let's have a look at it actually. Let's have a look. Let's get rid of that. Let's move that. Right, so we've got our torch and the work return there. Some people call it the earth. I, I call it the earth as well. The real name for it is the work return. So, let's see what spiders we've got hiding amongst them. None. So what happened was, that wire's no good anymore. That's got a load of uh, rust. It might be alright, you still use it, but you won't get a particularly good weld out of it. You could still use that wire, this won't be a good uh, thing. So I tried gluing it with some uh, thingy glue, Gorilla glue. Um, but what it is, that's the, uh, see look, it's all tangled up in there, probably because I was getting a bit frustrated with it and just left it. I might be able to get our new assembly. I need. I just need this. Just need this here. Is all I need, and this will be working 100% again. But um, what snapped on it? I can't remember. I think that snapped off, which means that uh, it weren't holding down and gripping the wire. Because this is a little motor in here. I think it's that what snapped. I can't remember now. It's been about I don't know eight or nine years. Since the, since it happened, since the last time I used it, what was I welding? I can't remember what I was welding a car or something. And um, so, when you put that up, because you use this to adjust the tension on here, so you want it so the little wheel when it goes round and feeds your wire, it grips it, but it doesn't grip it too much, and you want it to grip it just enough. So you put that up like that. And you can adjust the tension on it. I can't remember what happened now. I think that snapped off or something, which meant that you couldn't get it to tighten down to grip the wire, so it wouldn't feed your wire. That the little uh, wheel would slip on the wire, and it would all get stuck and everything. And um, I spent ages. I tried putting Gorilla Glue on it and everything, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, all I need is a new one of these. You might have to buy the whole assembly. I don't know, but. That's all it needs, and this is a perfectly good welder again. I've still got bloody more than half a bottle of um, Argon Shield gas already in there. But yeah, so when I eventually get round to it, I'll have to get this repaired and working again, I suppose. But it's just as and when, isn't it? You know, it's, it's not on my priority list, and uh, it's a shame, really, because it's a nice welder, but it's just not on my list of priorities. So. I'll get to it eventually. If anybody knows where I can get just this, I don't necessarily want the whole assembly, but if I can get the whole assembly, I will, as long as they're not majorly stupidly expensive. Um, but if anybody knows where I can just get this from, that's what I need is this, because I think that's where it snapped. I'm pretty sure it snapped there, where the glue is, and then this part fell off of this part. That's why I glued it on. But yeah, so there we go, one welder. I spent about two years welding pipelines and in oil refineries. You do that with stick mainly and you're all mainly upside down. It's, <laughs> it's, it's bloody hard work. But then I was in the workshop as well and I used to weld up frames and everything for different things. Uh, tankers, you know, petrol tankers, diesel tankers and things. And then I just decided to start up my own car garage one day welding up cars and uh, so that's what I got that for weld up cars but it didn't it wasn't successful because if it was successful I wouldn't be standing here now I'd be in a big mansion somewhere enjoying a luxury life well now we've ended up with a pile of spanners and tie levers a pile of dirt so I'm just going to be cleaning up in this little area <laughs> I've got these two gas stoves here these are gas cookers little single burner ones I wonder if they're about to fit in there. Might about to fit in there perhaps. I've got that one in there. 
Let's see what this one does. That'll be alright like that. Oh yeah, really. Hmm. Won't quite fit. I might better juggle it around a bit and get them to stay in there maybe. I managed to get those two to stay in there. I think I'm probably going to not bother keeping this one in there, but I might do. But at least those two are in there now. So get those out of the way. Also, what I've also got... Oh, I've got a little shield. And some spare gas. So, they can go in there. And be stored in there. Alright, lovely. Few funnels in that, so let's see what mess the, uh, the funnel cupboards in. Well, wow. <coughs> the funnel cupboards in a bit of a bit of a state. It goes that way. It goes in there. That one. We've got here. We've got pole starts as a hub for a quad bike. There's an old battery charger in there. Right. Put, that jug, put that jug in there. That one that can go inside there. That can go in there. That can probably go in there. That can go in there. There's all my jugs for mixing up petrol and um, paints, whatever I need to mix up. There's all my um, jugs and uh, funnels and whatnot, you know, for pouring diesel and petrol and all the other good fun stuff. Found a brand new pair of um, mud flaps for a Land Rover Discovery or Defender as well. Obviously bought them for my Discovery when I had it and never put them on. Brand new pair. Bear Mac. Made in India. <laughs> no idea. Unopened packet. Never put them on. So, don't know what I'll do with them. Try and find somebody with a Discovery or something that wants a pair of mud flaps. That's my barbecue coals. They're important for barbecues, so I'll keep them there. Uh, a bag of salt, which has gone everywhere, look. I've got a, a tub of screws and nails that need to be sorted out. I'm going to have to go through them and sort out which ones, because I don't really want to keep loads, but I've got literally jars and jars and jars of nuts and bolts, because you never know when you're going to need a nut or a bolt for something. Um, and you can have a look through and it will save your bacon a lot of the time but that's just full of screws and all sorts so I've got to sort through that it's going to take me a long old time I think found a load of these disposable barbecues though. one, two, three, four of them didn't even know I had them found them so I'll put them up there for now but I'm going to have to sort all that out found another pneumatic lovely, jubbly <laughs> so I'll put it with that one for now that's just my rubbish bag and put rubbish in that for now you got me a new watering can Thank you very much. Oh, you're going to shoot me with a... Oh, I see. Lovely. I'll put it on here. Oh, dear. Let's get a drink. What do you want? Do you want a smoothie? Do you want a smoothie? Or do you want a jelly squeeze? Yeah. What you got? Oh, a smoothie. Lovely. I'm going to have a nice bottle of water, I think. All right, come uh. here. As long as you're happy with that. It's a wicked. What? You got both? Yeah. How did you get both? Hey, I'm Oh, mm, that's a bit cheeky. <laughs> Blimey, I've had to stack all them toolboxes up there, look. Because I've got nowhere to put them. They're going to be a, a future video, sorting those out. There's so much stuff in them boxes. I've still got that one there. And I've got this one over here, but this is my toolbox I actually use. So, there you go. There's so many old tools in them other toolboxes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort them out. I really don't want to throw the boxes away or sell them or do anything because they're good boxes. I think so. I'm going to... I'll make a video. I'll, I'll put that on the tripod. And maybe some of you might find it interesting watching me sort out these old toolboxes. They're all from the 1970s and 80s and 90s, you know. Stuff that my dad used when he was working. So, full up with stuff. Brimmed with stuff from that time. 
So I looked in one, there's old spark plugs that are that thick, there's all sorts. So we'll sort them out in one video one time, and then I'll work out what I'm going to do with the boxes. But I need to do something with them because they're in the way, man. But there we go. We'll sort it out slowly. Look, I noticed my other aloes. I've got one little sprout in there. Um, this one has got a sprout in there, look. And this one's also got another sproutling at the back there coming up. I don't know what they're called, pups, whatever. I've got them sproutlings. <laughs> I don't know how to stop these from going woody like that. Um, that one's starting to do it. I've got one of these indoors, which is quite a mature plant, and it starts in the middle there, and it's just got leaves. That's all it's got is leaves. It doesn't have this like woody stalk that all the other ones seem to have. Look at my pictures. They're growing up nicely, man. They're very nice now. They must like it in here, where it's dark. There's no sunlight coming in during the day. It's complete pitch black darkness. They must love it. The fly trap has died off. I think it's the end of it, end of its growing year. So I'm gonna leave that there. But uh, yeah, these are properly growing nicely now. Proper happy with them. I've got one more aloe in the other room. And that's, that's lovely. This one in here, look, I showed you earlier, it's got a little sprout in. Needs a bit of water actually, but um, it's a lovely one. This one, it hasn't got its woody stalk, um, but it's fresh thin. It must be a different breed of aloe vera or aloe or whatever, I don't know. But nice. Proper enjoy growing plants for some reason. What you found? Load of spanners and tire levers. Alright. And a car. Nice, very nice. I noticed there was a sump plug on the floor down there. And I went to pick up the sump plug. Look what I found. Bloody hell. Feel like it was going to jump from your hand. Come on, focus. This wouldn't be a very good day without a bar of can, would it? Look at that. That's a big old one, isn't it, eh? Yeah, what's that on his body? Look at that! God, that's huge! That's a weird old spider, that is. Blimey! Anyway, we're carrying on doing a bit of tidying. I'll catch you a lot on the next one, when probably we began through them toolboxes or something like that. I've, got, I've also got a lawnmower to fix. It's a, a real mower, you know, an old one. So, probably get that, that's got a leaky carburetor that one, so, see you on the next one, you look, all the best.